Hey, what's up folks? We're going to take a quick run through Vue CLI, in particular the release candidate for version 3. Vue CLI is a scaffolding tool. What that means is you tell it about the project you want to build with Vue and it creates a whole project scaffolding. Like all of your, your development server and your, your build tools and uh, if you need to use post CSS or less or stylus or view router does Babel all that happy stuff it configures it for you so you can really get started and and be productive rather than futzing around with webpack config file for like six years so let's take a quick look at that now view CLI uh, you install it by here let me just kill that sucker you start by going npm install and dash g if you tend to do things globally. I tend to install this kind of stuff on my home folder under Linux, and then that node modules bin folder is just part of my path. But it's at view slash cli, and it's going to install all of its stuff. Once you have it installed, you can set up a new project through the at the command line or you can do it by a visual sort of tool do the visual tool for you and here it's showing the view project manager I've already made one I'll show you what it looks like to create a new one we'll go create and we'll put it in this workspace folder give it a name and use npm for our package manager initialize a git repository there and we're going to manually select features. You can create a project with a bunch of different presets and then save that configuration so your next project, it can use those same presets. Now do this manually. We're gonna have it do Babel. We're not gonna do TypeScript. We're gonna have it add progressive web app support, which is really nice. We can do the view router or the Vuex uh, state manager. CSS preprocessors, note that PostCSS is built in. You don't need to pick anything there for preprocessors. Pre That's only if you're using SAS less or stylus. Uh, linter formatter to yell at you if your code's ugly. <laughs> we, we, we don't want that. Unit testing, end to end testing, uh, particular config files you want. You can add all this stuff to your project and then you just hit create project and off it'll go and make that project for you. What that does is you'll end up with a folder that looks kind of like this minus this uh, minus this disk folder which won't happen until you, you build something. So it is going to make your package.json and install everything for you there and you can see this is one really clean package.json. It's couple of view CLI tools, the service, the progressive web app stuff and Babel. And I got view. I did put Vuex on this project and register service worker for the service worker. And that's pretty much it. I added two extra packages and once you have your scaffold set up, you just do that just npm install like you would with any project. I added Mapbox GL so we can toss in a little map and I added post CSS preset ENV so we can do that next generation e post CSS crap. So that's what your package.json looks like. It also puts in some configuration files like a browser list RC. I've, I've monkeyed with this a little bit. It'll put in a post CSS configuration and I've monkeyed with this too. I added post CSS preset ENV. That's the replacement for CSS next, it does that same sort of thing. And I've specifically added nesting features because those are awesome. I also, uh, or actually I just made this Babel configuration by itself and I didn't need to change anything there. And I did add one file here. If you want to change the way uh, Vue CLI and Webpack behind the scenes works, you create a view.config.js. What I've done here is I've changed the base URL. By default, Vue CLI wants to, this, I call this my app because creative guy. 
By default, it thinks you're going to go to myapp.com, and that's where it makes links to. So I generally put things in subfolders. So I just changed the base URL to be an empty string for production, so it's just relative paths. I turned on CSS source maps. By default, those are off, and source maps are a good thing. Uh, JavaScript source maps are on by default. I don't know why they didn't stick CSS ones on, but they're on now. And this configure Webpack option is how you tell Webpack to do different things. And these Webpack configurations get merged into the default Webpack configuration that it's running. So I added here no parse for MapboxGL because parse for MapboxGL breaks MapboxGL in production mode with Webpack. So I needed to add that. So all of that is up and added. In terms of where stuff is located for your actual project, you end up with a public folder and a source folder. Public folder includes things like images, index.html, your manifest, uh, robots.txt, favicon, that kind of stuff. Your source folder contains uh, stuff to be executed, like your your main JavaScript file, your uh, app, your your view components. Uh, if you're gonna have a, an extra CSS file that's not part of your view components, I just put one there. Your source worker register, that kind of stuff. So that's the project layout. The source and the public thing in two different places threw me for a bit. Just think of public as like a static assets, even though there's an assets in the source folder. Everything in public is going to get more or less copied to the production build. It will monkey with the index.html a bit. It's going to inject the CSS and JavaScript links. Uh, it's going to put a whole bunch of progressive web app type links in here. So it's going to do that sort of stuff. But in general, stuff in the public folder is just going to get moved straight into production. So we're going to go into our source and uh, let's turn off a couple of things I added here. So you get the uh, you get the straight out of the box feel. To get things started in development mode, you go npm run serve. It doesn't put it under start. You can change that if you want. And it's going to fire up, and it's it's running a Webpack development server. Uh, it does it, if you've seen Webpack development server's default output, it's generally a, a screaming mess. It makes it much prettier here. So we're going to go to localhost 8080. And this is by default what it does for you. It just makes a basic... These are uh, got a couple of view components, and it's it's running view, and everything's happy. Pull up the console. One thing to note about when you're developing a press web app: always have the console open so it you can have it clear out sticky, cachey sorts of things. Let's add a map. So I'm going to go over to our main.js, and well, first I made a map.view a map component. That's very straightforward. We have our map catcher, that div. I'm importing mapboxgl. I'm creating my component configuration here. I just named it map. And when map is mounted, it is going to basically make a map for with my tiles in my area. For the style, notice I'm doing an import here right in the style from the view component. The imports and everything seem to be handled very well. And uh, CSS variables are passed along very well. You can have a CSS, CSS variable outside of the uh, view component CSS and it will still read those, which is, is very nice. And we're just setting a map size here, so nothing too fancy. Back to our main.js, we'll uncomment this sucker. Hit go, see how fast it did its reload thing. And now we've got a happy little map. There should be like a Bob Ross for for mapping apps. Make make happy little happy little maps. So uh, another thing to note, it doesn't come with an external CSS file at all in the default configuration, and I generally always have one for view apps because there are things like uh, 
default fonts and grid systems and things like that that you're not going to want to stick into individual view components. So I just made a main.css file in this assets folder for no particular reason. If I did it again, I might create a, a CSS folder in this source folder. In fact, let, let's do that. Let's go. New folder. Actually, let's not put it there. Let's just put it straight to source. And we will just put a copy of that in there for now so nothing yells at me when I do this. We'll go to our... The thing with CSS and Webpack, which always drove me a little batty, is to get that external CSS working through all of your post CSS and all of your transformation tools. You're going to need to import that into your JavaScript, which well, just makes, drives me nuts. But you have to do it. Another th interesting thing is uh, the scaffolding, when it makes you the basic project, it doesn't put semicolons at the end. That drives me a little crazy, too. Well, let's import that CSS file from over there. And then to make sure it's working, we'll go to that particular CSS file and We'll change the background color of the page. And you see now it's that light gray. So that's how you'd add an external CSS file. When you're all done developing, go npm run build, and that will create a dist folder for you. It will also delete a dist folder if one's already there, which is nice. A lot of these build steps for these, these uh, uh, and these toolkits don't clear out the dist folder. And that means that you can have crap in there from when you're doing development runs that doesn't get cleared out. Here's our disk folder. You can see it's done, uh, see a little bit about what it did here. Vendors, uh, 186 kilobytes gzipped. Our actual app code is like two kilobytes gzipped. You can see what it did with all of this stuff. You see this this vendor CSS is all Mapbox GL's stuff because that's that's all we really imported. In our disk folder, you see it breaks the JavaScript up into app and chunk vendors, which is the vendor stuff. The does the same with CSS. It's got our precache manifest and our service worker code index.html they've uh, squished will make it prettier it actually adds all of this stuff through the build tool which is pretty darn nice and now you've got a working app if we launch this straight from here from the dist folder You can see we've got our working app up for running and it's ready to be sent out to your web server so everybody can see this awesome app you just built. So that's VCLI version three and it is it is really, really good. Uh, I'd, every few months I go, I'm going to make a Webpack thing from scratch with all the things I need because I have to be wrong about Webpack. Every, it's, it's the king of the hill. There has to be a reason. And I will spend hours futzing around with it, and then something will just so infuriate me, I'll throw the whole thing in the trash, and I'll come back and try it again in three months. This is using Webpack behind the scenes, but it's all taken care of for you. It's doing your view stuff, of course. It's doing JavaScript, Babel, PostCSS, it's even handling progressive web app stuff the way I have it configured. It can, you can have it automatically take care of TypeScript and all of that kind of stuff. It, view, the view CLI version three is really, really nice. And if you're looking to make a view project, uh, I would strongly recommend checking it out. It, it's, it's so nice. Even if you're not planning on making a view project, you can probably just toss the view parts out and just use this and it's, I have a feeling that if you just went into your main.js 
and commented out all of the view stuff, you could uh, just do regular JavaScript stuff or React or whatever you want, and it'd still probably work just straight out of the box. I could be wrong about that, but I can't think of why that wouldn't work. But it is just really, really nice. So if you're looking to make a view project, I would give this a shot, even though it's still a release candidate, it seems to work great. Anyway, I'll check you later. Bye-bye.